the Collegiate League of Legends Championship. I am Delta. I'm joined by Zoc. Zoc, how are you today? I'm doing great. How are you, Jaden? Delta? Doing doing well. Uh, really excited to be back and here for some more League of Legends. We're getting into crunch time now. We Only are, but we're still left. in playoff contention. Yes, absolutely. We're uh, three and one right now. I believe uh, we actually even have a, a fancy team graphic that can show us all the stats and things. Um, I do believe we have a sub who is playing this week. So we still have to get that figured out. And we will let you know when we know, because uh, we don't know exactly what the deal is with that yet. But we should soon. And we're excited to see week five. We're playing against Carleton College, excuse me, Carl Carleton University this week, uh, who is also three and one. So we're in that winner go, go home time. If you lose now, you're out of playoffs. That's it. If you win now, there's always next week. So excited to see that coming. Bye. Yeah, I don't need more right now we are getting into the pick ban. Uh, Senna taken away. We have NYU on the blue side. Um, you know, very strong champion that we've seen across all uh, levels of play um, with the new build with the Kraken Slayer and the Rage Blade. So no it's surprises fun, there. Yeah. As Talon is taken so, away yeah. um, from low key parkour, uh, we can see actually that Furbo, who is our sub. Um, is going to be playing in the AD carry position. Okay. Uh, so tell us a little bit. Yeah, tell us a little bit more about Furbo. What's he doing here? Uh, I wish I knew more about Furbo. I'll be honest. Uh, I know he is a solo queue warrior. Uh, he plays a hell of a lot of Malazahar. Um, Quite well. No. Yeah, really well. He uh, is like sixty percent win rate with like hundred and thirty games on that in like Master. So. Very good Malzahar player. I don't know if we'll see the Malzahar. I'd be pretty surprised. We were sort of uh, theory crafting it uh, before the stream went live about whether or not that was reasonable in the bot lane. But we do see yeah. the Galio ban a well, as well away from Dawid. He has played that champion very well. To like, uh, I can I can look exactly, but like an eleven k here on Galio, so makes sense. The, the Malzahar has not been banned. It is going to be the Hecarim. For Ooh. doubt here, the first pick. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I had a really great showing on this champion, and uh, it seems like even with the jungle changes, getting less XP, the NYU squad wants to put their eggs in the Hecarim basket. So very exciting stuff from them. Yeah, I mean, the Hecarim has been a priority pick all year on both sides, and I'm actually really surprised that it got through pick bans here because, uh, as you said, he's had a really good showing on this champion. He's 3-0 and on this champion. It will be matched by the Udyr, who, as we know, is a really powerful pick right now. And I'll be honest, I'm worried that the Udyr has suffered less than every other champion in this uh, XP thing, and it looks like it might be the Kai'Saw, which is another really powerful pick right now. So... You get that Hecarim first, but you give up two other big priority picks for it. Yeah, you have to imagine that NYU could have seen that coming. Uh, Udyr and Kaisa, actually, both champions that have been picked, uh, you know, blind uh, first in, in a lot of games. So uh, it makes me think that maybe they have a strategy oh. to deal with it. And maybe okay, that okay, hold on, hold on. Here. I would be locked in. I would guess. That this is not low key parkour's Vigar. This is a Furbo. This is I think this is going to be a Furbo Vigar. It's good into. I bet it's good into Udir. Yeah. I bet it's good into Kaisa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Put that cage down. Yeah. Kaisa. Kaisa mobility. obviously has the mobility with that supercharge, but especially early, it doesn't give you a lot of room to maneuver, and the cage is definitely big enough to stop that from happening. So, I would not no. be surprised at all to see this Vigar go to Furbo in the bot lane. Yeah. which is really spicy. And if you have a mid laner, you know, subbing in his AD carry, why not give him a mid laner to play? Yeah, absolutely. Especially paired with that Leona. A uh, lot of crowd control set up uh, to kill that Kaisa and really bully out Never Story here. Um, as it is going to be the Thresh hover. And okay. just like that, we've got our bot lanes probably locked in as well as the junglers. So this is super typical that right now that we're seeing bot lane plus jungle be the picks in the first half of picks and bans, and then the mid laners and the top laners being left for later. Uh, those picks, especially now with top laners, I would feel like the matchups are, uh, how do I want to say this, more, more reliant on pick ban priority than they have been perhaps in previous seasons. Uh, teams are definitely wanting to see more of the team comps before picking those. So we will see a Caitlyn ban on the side of of Carlton, which makes me think that maybe they don't know what's up with this Vigar. Well, I guess we could be wrong. To be fair, Jay, uh, Delta, we also don't necessarily entirely know what's up with this Vigar. Um, 
But it, it is our job I, to pretend like we know. It is our job to pretend like we do. I don't hate the Caitlyn ban. Um, I think if they Ooh, okay. uh, are maybe hedging their bets and think that the best way for NYU to play is to pick Caitlyn or MF here and they want to get that strategy off the table because it can still be a flex. Um, they, I don't think NYU has to commit Vagar to either mid lane or bot lane. Right. Um, so... Uh, but you know, uh, the side of Carlton deciding that they, they don't want to play against the Zadie carries. The other thing though, is that Loki parkour is so incredibly happy to play an AD assassin. Like yeah. that is his, his comfort zone. He's played the Yone. He's played the Zed. He's even played like the Pantheon. He's played Renekton. He's actually only played one AP champion this entire year. Uh, so this Vigar bot lane gives him the flexibility from like a damage mixture standpoint as Camille's going to be picked up. That's another really powerful pick actually that uh, has slipped through to Carlton here. So it will be Camille for Tentakai. Uh, but we'll see now what NYU decides to round out their cop with. Leaving the mid laner open for Carlton. So they're going to have some flexibility. Oh. Looks like it's going to be the Riven. Riven got buffed a couple of patches ago to give that Selenic e loves this. a shorter cooldown. And this champion has been tearing it up all over the place. Uh, was played in LEC by Bwipo to great effect. Oh. And in the top lane against Camille is one of the classic uh, top lane skill matchups. So we're going to have some fireworks. Oh, and it is, I think, going to be the Zed. Especially yes. The Zed. Yes. The Zed. We got Zed. Oh, um, boy. Oh, boy. This is and a, I this think is Carlton nice is one. suddenly like, oh, wait. Oh. Oh, where's the Vigar going to go? Oh, going? Maybe Bot lane. So, this is really interesting because I was a little worried about, okay, what's going to happen when we, we summon this mid laner for the Zadie carry? Well, it turns out it lets, you put, it lets you put Doubt, Selenic, Loki Parkour, and Daweed all on comfort picks because you're yeah. able to flex this Vigar to the AD carry role. Yeah. So this is, I man, this is such a solo queue draft. I mean, Absolutely. from NYU, and a really cl much more classic, a much more classic like competitive draft from from Carlton. But it, at the same time, I feel like Carlton kind of got out drafted here, just because. I mean, every every one of these lanes is so stable for NYU. I mean, Zed into Echo is totally fine if you're low key parkour. I guarantee you, he knows that matchup better than Jumbo Booty does, considering that all low key parkour does is play Zed and Talon. Uh, Selenic has been wanting to play the Riven all year. He hasn't gotten to, it's been banned away. It hasn't been like the ideal pick and he gets it into, like you said, the classic Camille matchup. Furbo gets to play an AD carry, gets to play AD carry, but gets to play a mid laner anyway. And <laughs> you know, Deweed has a 14 KDA this year on Leona. Yeah. Yeah. I do want to highlight that. I, I think with the Udir, especially into two, um, melee attack damage champions, Riven and Zed, um, I do believe that both 2v2s are lost um, by okay, NYU. Sure. Uh, Udyr, really good early game at running over a lot of these melee champions. And so they're going to have to do a little bit of work to um, cover kind of that weakness and that and the deficit. But I think uh, we might just see a doubt opt for a, a swapped and an inverted jungle clear um, because you don't want to fight Udyr early. Certainly not if he has Camille with him as well. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a good point about that 2v2. And so I think we will see uh, Udir will get to decide what crab he would like uh, yeah. and take that one. But on the other hand, as we get up to these, like, you know, once Hecarim has that unstoppable onslaught, we have those level sixes available. Objective control, I think, is not nearly as cut and dry as those 2v2s are. Uh, yeah. I think NYU is definitely going to have an ability to threaten these objectives and and make some plays, especially if Loki Parkour is able to push this Echo in, maybe get a roam onto this Kai'Sa, you know, get the cage down, blow a flash early, like those sorts of plays. So I think this is going to be really reliant on moving around the map and being one step ahead of where Carlton wants to be, especially with the Udyr movement speed. And also, you know, Echo and Camille are very, very good at roaming as well. You need to have good vision and be able to know where those champions are. But if you're able to do that, I think there's a lot of ability to get picks and make plays. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, abs I I totally think that NYU is going to look to snowball here. You know, you're playing Riven, you're playing Zed, and you don't have an AD carry on your team. So playing for scaling isn't necessarily as much of an option. Uh, not so, that Vigar scales poorly, to be fair. Not that Vigar scales poorly, but maybe not as good as killing the likes of Udyr and Camille as as like Kaiso would be. Um, but right. certainly a lot of room in the early, in the mid game to make those plays. Um, it's going to be on NYU to make it happen. And I, I'm, I'm 
hopefully they're going to pull it off. It's going to be fun. I, you know, it's so hard. This is such a, a tale of two drafts that it's hard to say like exactly what I think is the advantage here, but uh, I'll, I'm definitely more excited to watch NYU's comp. Uh, <laughs> I've watched, I've watched the Carlton comp in pro play enough. You know, it's, it's yeah. very classic. It's very, very typical. Uh, you know, we know what they're trying to achieve here. NYU could go anywhere with this. We, we Furbo is such an unknown quantity. I mean, you know, obviously we're sad not to see Extramatic out here because he has been such a such a great player all year for NYU. But you know, it's always fun to get new guys in and see what they can do and bring a different look to the team. And when we're in such a crunch time position here, three and one need to win this match. Yeah. Why not? If, you know, the enemy team doesn't know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, the enemy team can't know what you're doing either. Yep. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> a reminder for people watching out there that I believe two losses means disqualification yep. from playoffs automatically before they even begin. So loser. But one loss is a guaranteed. You're guaranteed to make it. Yeah. So yep. loser of this series uh, is out for the season or it will end their season um, with the last game of the regular season. And the winner will have a shot to continue their run into playoffs. Delta, who are you going to give it to for this game? NYU. NYU. Hell yeah. So you, you comp, let's run it down. Let's so see what we're happens. We're playing dead. We're playing Riven. We're going we're gonna to kill people. We're In all seriousness, the buttons. thing I would like to say is we talk about ease of execution a lot when we talk about these draft comps. And I do think that the Carlton comp is probably easier to execute. There right. is more going on in the NYU comp that needs to come together. But if they're able to do so, I think they will have the advantage. That being said, if, you know, if I'm putting my analysis cap on and trying to be unbiased... I think that is really even. I think Carlton has a lot of good things going on, but I think that NYU might be able to surprise them, get this Vigar lane going, and I, I have to imagine that the like this Kaisa Thresh mashup for Vigar Leona is really good. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna come down to. I, I think you're right. It's gonna come down to what can happen early. These these are very snowbally champions, and uh, you know you're you're playing against Kaisa, you're playing against Echo champions that scale really hard, so. You got to get the ball rolling, and yeah. we will have to see if they can do it. Um, I'd like to yeah. also just, I think we should focus especially on um, looking at, you know, can Loki Parkour make something happen pre-6? Because you're not killing yeah. Echo as Zed post-6. Like, that's just not going to happen. Right. But, you know, there's definitely some pressure pre-6. And then Selenix Ch Riven, which has been... I mean, the games he's played it, he's looked really good. It's gotten banned away. He talked about last week wanting to play it into the Camille. <laughs> and actually what happened last week is that uh, in second bans with top laners still up, they banned away the Riven and then picked Camille against him. So he wasn't wow. able to play that matchup. Uh, but now he has it. So would love to see if he's able to sort of style out that matchup and make that happen this week. Yeah, it's it's like the ego matchup, right? Um, oh, often, yeah. Oftentimes considered to be to be pretty even i've actually i've spent a lot of time in the past couple of months trying to learn riven uh against primarily my friend who's a camille one trick okay and it is it is an incredibly snowbally matchup and uh it really does come down to the skills and and the usage of the cooldowns to to dodge whatever you can i will say i think the onus of outplay does fall on the riven player um Camille kind of has an easier time stat checking using that shield um, and also having a little bit of range advantage. Because we all know that Camille's kit is very fair and doesn't have too many abilities, we promise. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah, um, Yeah. exactly. <laughs> so, you know, if he can make it work, then then I, I, I'm excited just as an aspiring Riven player. to see. Oh, it's, this is going to be a fun game. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and then... We mentioned Selenic. Uh, who else are you going to be looking for? Uh, maybe on the side of Carlton. Who 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 are you looking to make things happen for them? Well, on the side of Carlton, so the one game of AD carry that has oh sorry of, of obviously their AD carry plays lots of AD carry. The one game of Kai saw that their AD carry played uh, never story. Uh, he went something like fourteen and two on. So okay. definitely going to look. You know, Not he's bad. been he's been one of their strongest players. Uh, JD Payne. And Tentakai, uh, so mid laner and top laner respectively, are both also Grandmaster. So very, very skilled players. So going to be seeing if they are able to make things happen on this Echo and obviously the Camille. The Camille has been picked by uh, Tentakai. This is the first Echo game for JD Payne. He's been favoring the Orianna and the Syndra so far. So okay, likes yeah. those control mages. This is maybe a little bit different than that sort of typical control mage play style, but we'll see what yeah. he's able to do on that. 
Uh, but I also think that the the matchup in the jungle is going to be interesting because Hecarim is something that Aiken has really liked to play. Uh, but also Doubt has obviously he's three and zero on the champion so far this year. Has let me look. I actually have the stats right here. Um, yep, three and zero with a nine point one KDA Ooh. so far on Hecarim. So Not pretty good bad. at that champion. Uh, yeah. And one thing we talked about last week, we had Mystery Van uh, join us, and he'll actually be joining us again after the draft for Game 2. Uh, he'll be here with us. Is uh, we, we put some bets on it, and you, you can play the game with us. Uh, so over, under, Hecarim full clear, 3 minutes and 10 seconds. Which side do you want? Ooh. Um, I'm gonna go, ooh, 310? 310. I'm gonna, I'll, here, I'll make it easy. I'll take the under. You'll take the under? I think I it's, think, yeah. So I, because the, the jungle nerfs obviously changed um, how much XP you get. I haven't done a ton of research on if that changes when you get a level, but I do think that that might impact okay. tech room That's a good point. Clear. If not, I think, because the, the last skill you would take, yeah, because the last skill you would take is the E usually. The you go to the e. QWQE usually, right? Yeah. So it, yeah. It, it might it might make a difference getting in between the camps. That's a good point. But I do think that it will certainly uh, make it so he's maybe less healthy for well, this contest. I'll tell you this. Last week on Hecarim, his full clear was 306. Oh, wow. So... He's done it before. <laughs> All right, we're here. We have a five-man bot lane already for Carlton University. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Game one of this best of three between New York University and Carlton University. They are going to invade bot lane, but as you see, the tri ward here is That's going two stacks, to baby. Two stacks. Two stacks on the Vigar outscaling team. already. Outscaling already. The baleful strike is winding up. Oh um, yeah. And that oh yeah. Look, fun. and there he goes. He pigs it. Oh yeah, it, that, <laughs> he knows. that's worth an all chat. You know, you used a ward, but yeah, that's what you say. You say, yeah, slash all. Thanks for the stacks. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. I think it's good though. Set up from NYU, getting that ward down. Um, they don't really have the best. They have an okay level one, but it's always kind of sketchy to play into Thresh. So they're gonna be happy with repelling that engage as they set up um, for the first buffs. Uh, interestingly though. It is going to be both of junglers starting for a bot side start. Um, so they are going to be towards that top Ooh. scuttle at the same time. So I wonder if Doubt here is kind of banking on being able to clear faster and try to get that scuttle early. But look at this Delta in the bottom lane. Yeah, the bottom I was just going to say, they yeah, haven't leashed. This could be, can we look at bot lane, please, Steve? This yep. could be really dangerous. Oh, that's Furbo's a hook. Connect. The exhaust is going to go down into Furbo. The plasma is stacked oh. up. Oh, auto would do it with the flash away is going to save Furbo. And that is why Kaisa is, uh, you know, that's huge. Right now. Tons so Carlton, Carlton, like, really, you know, they're, they're, they were banking on being able to punish this bot lane for maybe not giving any respect to the level 1 Thresh, and that is going to happen. Uh, Furbo, actually, he's back in lane full health. He did back and TP back already, mm -hmm. uh, so he does have TP, which is typical on this Vigar AD carry, AD carry, whatever you want to call it. But, uh, you know, Flash and, and Teleport burned already in the bot lane in exchange for just an exhaust, and that that's big. That's really big if you're Carlton. Yeah, and you can see here that Furbo is just hitting his first CS. Um, so it looks like the side of Carlton are going to be able to set themselves up for a cheater recall if they want to go back and get a early advantage, or they can hit plates. The the world is really their oyster right now. As uh, oh, low key parkour. Oh, he misses the Q. Oh, the Razor Shuriken doesn't quite connect, but. Uh, you know, I have to say I was a little bit skeptical of this Zed blind pick, but if he's going to be doing that all game, uh, you know, then it's going to work out for him, I think. That was, yeah, so Flash's burn in the mid lane, the Ignite burn for Loki Parkour as well. Teleport back, and here's JD Payne. We talked oh. about the cheater. What? Why cheater recall when you can just come mid? The play under tower. Oh. Loki Parkour is going to be taken down, and that turret shot will not finish off JD Payne, so... First blood over to the side of Carlton as we're seeing Doubt getting pressured as here comes Aiken. Ghost yeah. is popped. Oh, the Udir is just so strong in the early game and Aiken is going to have his way. The Scuttle Crab, though, did go over to Doubt. So not totally a loss for NYU, but yeah. Well, actually, Doubt throw. still has his ghost. So 
That actually yeah, isn't plus. the end of the world. Yeah. Okay, so summoner spell advantage towards NYU there. Um, as it looks like the bot crab actually might be taken here by NYU. Daweed is roaming up to zone here. Aiken is looking no flash in the mid on Loki of our core, no flash. Is just uh -oh. gonna let Aiken trans uh kind of walk down into the river. This could be and a NYU has already collapsed mid. here. Doubt is gonna look on in the uh the Echo no flash charge is gonna connect as Daweed has made his way into the fight. The stun has landed oh. onto the members of uh of the Canadian oh. triple kill going over to low-key parkour. A great early skirmish from NYU. Wow, so Everyone's mid lane and the Vigar Cage finds a stun on two members. The TPs come in, but TPing into a Vigar is really hard because he can just put a cage on top of where you're going to let end up. And the stuns come through. Triple kill with creep parkour. They might not be done. Never stories here. Thresh is here as well, but so is down on the Hecarim. Here comes the Hecarim. Oh, the Hex Flash is going to come through as the charge connects on the Never Story. The Lantern is there, but it might uh -oh. not be enough. But Aiken has come. They can turn the fight around. Doubt is just going to take one for the team and try and stall them up as much as he can. The Tower Dive could come through. The wave is not quite there. And it looks like it's just going to be a one for zero over to Carleton College. University, sorry. Yeah, good job there from Thresh as well. Oh my gosh. Fighting is oh, not open. Uh oh, Loki's level four. Next with a Loki parkour, and the last oh. one shuts him down. I believe that was Red Buff actually that gets the kill. A bloodbath in this game so far. Wow, this has been very, very chaotic. As we do see the trade come through from Soletic top lane, but they're just sort of doing their top lane thing. Nothing Fashion too much around. happening. Uh, but yeah, man, bloody all over the map. <laughs> Loki parkour is three has three kills and two deaths already. Uh, in the first six minutes of this game, he's level four uh, already. And uh, we do see level six come through for the top laners. So a little bit crazy all over the place, but big shutdown gold going over to Aiken on the Udi or onto that Zed as well. So yeah, a little bit chaotic here. Not super in control, I would say, from either of these teams as we are going to see Jumbo Booty move up towards mid top crab, but nothing there right now. Crab is not spawned and yeah, this is, I think, the thing is what happened is Doubt, Doubt thought this was going to be a clean 3v2. They didn't know where the Udyr was, didn't have enough vision, and were not able to get that clean 3v2 off. Great Lantern from JD Payne, able to help the Kai'Saw get out as well without getting caged. So, whoo! A little bit of chaos. JD Payne, again, looking for maybe to make something happen on the top lane. This guy has been all over the map this game. Uh, pulling off that gank middle a couple of minutes ago, and now working his way top. Um, and you can see that Never Story isn't even being punished for this. Uh, 15 CS there, 17 actually, up for him on the Kaisa. Is doubt might be looking to make something happen here. The wave is pushing uh -oh. into the side of NYU, but Aiken might be here for the counter. Selenic is going to go in. The Blade of the Exile is activated. Oh, Tentakai! Oh! Wind Slash takes him so low, and an auto attack is going to seal the deal. A kill over to Selenic, and that is huge, Delta. That is huge. Selenic on the river. And a really beautiful, unstoppable onslaught from, oh. ooh, as Aiken is going to cancel this, but he oh, might have been off more than he could do. Selenic! wins! Oh, another kill for Selenic. That is disastrous for Carlton. This room wow. is so huge. Yeah, so... I mean, a great unstoppable onslaught from Doubt there, perfectly executed to get the Camille feared back towards the Riven and not into tower range, allowing Selenic to pick up that kill without taking any tower shots. And we talked about the Doubt on this Hecarim. Yeah, you know, the Udyr thing's been a little, a little questionable, but he's up two or three full camps and has four assists already. So he's been all over the place, really doing a great job of using the early up mobility and uh, really, I mean, the strength of Hecarim in this early to mid game to put some stuff on the map. The next thing though is, while all that craziness was happening, Aiken was able to solo the dragon. So they need to be a little careful about that. It's going to be either Ocean or Infernal Soul this game, both of which are very, very impactful to pick up. So mm. definitely getting to prioritize those objectives, but so far so good in the jungle for Doubt, and he is definitely doing a great job on this hacker and making things happen around the map. And you can see that the story of this game has been the bot side versus the top side as Carlton has amassed an even bigger CS lead yeah. onto their AD carry, using that priority to get the dragon. 
Um, whereas NYU has chosen to funnel their resources top and uh, get this ribbon uh, piloted by Selenic insanely ahead. Whoa. You can see a bullying uh, Tentakai here, and it's going to be fun to see what happens when these two sides of the map collide. We did... now... Sorry, go ahead. On Selenic, we did talk about you. You mentioned how this matchup can be. Well, uh, the snowball has begun in earnest if you're Riven it's here. It's rolling. As he's going to move forward. Doubt is here, but so is Aiken. Oh! oh the flash <laughs> with his broken wings takes him down. Aiken is here to try and maybe Aiken clean Aiken was up, no part of that. He's just going to pop the ghost and get out of here. And Selenic is just going to clear this wave, denying that whole creep wave into the tower. And this is just getting sadder and sadder if wow. you are the Camille in this matchup. So if you've been watching the previous weeks, you've been paying attention, we've given a lot of credit to Selenic for playing what has been really exceptional weak side top lane Not week in and week out. The era of weak side Selenic is over. He is here. He might be dead, but I don't oh. even care. Oh, he almost is able to make it out there, but the flash play from JD Payne is just too on point and shut down going over to Aiken. Uh, but that does not help out Tendrick guy here. He is yeah. still going to be very much behind. You know, Selenic has definitely been on the weak side in all these games, you know, forced to take a couple of deaths just because the map is focused on, and, and reasonably so, on Extramatic in the bot lane, who's been, you know, he's averaging a 10 KDA as an 80 carry over the course of the season, which is unbelievable. But... You know what? Selenic was like, hey, we've got a sub. Let me shine. Put me on something strong. Let me carry. And right now, he is styling on this Camille. Yeah, he opted into the skill matchup, and it is paying dividends for them. So, uh, yeah. And like we said, though, uh, bot lane, Kaisa now at a 33-4 yeah. CS advantage. So it is going to be up to Selenic on this Riven and low-key parkour on the Zed to try and nullify this threat. And I think we're going to see that as this dragon is spawning. Both teleports are available for the top laners. Uh, we might be seeing a little bit of action here in the bot lane. JD Payne going to throw the hook, but it is going to go wide. Um, this bot lane is going to shove the wave in. And we are going to be looking for a dragon fight. Yeah, and uh, this Kaisa can definitely shove the wave more effectively than Furbo can on the Vigar. So definitely a little harder for this bot lane to move up and the priority in the firmly in the hands of Carlton right now. But Solar Flare comes in, Aiken is able to dodge the center of it, but he is forced off and now the vision control is here. Camille is in the top lane and here comes Selenic is rubbing all the way down. We see Echo back, back. He's going to give up this dragon. So nicely done from NYU, understanding their timing windows and when they're able to play around this objective, knowing that Echo needed to go back. And yeah, Selenic just walks down just in case. He's not even going to, I don't think he's going to miss basically any minions here. He's just going to walk Mosey his way back up to top lane. And NYU, it will be the Infernal Soul. NYU able to use their pressure uh, from the top lane, rotate that into the mid, and then uh, take the dragon relatively uncontested. So they're going to feel pretty good about that. Delta, don't have to worry about being on soul point in the next five minutes. Um, yeah, and you absolutely. can see that Selenic, he missed a couple of waves, but not that much as Deweed. Uh, I think he actually ended up waves. missing exactly three minions. Wow. Yeah. So, pretty impressive. Not and a big deal. <laughs> worth a dragon, if you ask me. I actually believe it's the same amount of gold uh, if they're all melees. So, sure. Um, NYU going to be pretty happy with that trade as we see uh, Aiken taking a recall here. Going to be finishing up that turbo chem tank. So able to now run down the members of NYU, but not a lot of members necessarily you want to run down. Uh, yeah, I mean, we Agar. see that the Black Thunder already on doubt. Furbo is forced to flash away here. The exhaust comes Ooh, through. The flash forward oh, from Neverspory oh. is going to secure the kill. And now Deweed is maybe caught out as a teleport is channeled through from the Camille, but Selenic has already arrived. He has the Blade of the oh. Exile lighting. The Wind Slash is here as Loki Parkour has made his way down. Selenic is taken out as Aiken slaps him with the Bear Paw. And a two for one in favor of Carlton College as they have the numbers advantage, but the fight is not yet over. Rift Herald yeah. is going to be popped here. Furbo has made his way back into the fight with the teleport. And Carlton is just going to take the plates and say, thank you. A lot of gold into the pockets of Carleton University. Yeah, we're definitely seeing, and it feels like with, you know, Furbo here instead of Extramatic, that everything's just a little bit less 
cohesive. It's a little bit more like we talked about it being a solo queue draft. It feels a little bit more like a solo queue game. Players not quite playing around each other in the same way. We've seen the discipline increase day after day, week after week for NYU, and it feels a little bit more disjointed today, but not the end of the world either. I mean, it wasn't that, you know, they lost some plating spot as Loki Parkour will be forced to use the shadow to get away from the echo there. But yeah, I mean, just a little bit all over the place, but Carlton's not punishing them in a way that I think they might have been able to also. Uh, there's definitely been some windows where I think if NYU wasn't being careful, they, they definitely might have gotten punished harder as we will see Selenic and Tentakai brawling it out, but Tentakai just has no hope. He is way down. We've seen the Gore Drinker already completed for Selenic. And yeah, I mean, just, you know, a little bit disjointed, but also NYU, I think, is doing a good job of, of understanding that they're going to be and, and not getting too punished for that. Doubt just going to go into the mid lane there and truck uh, Jumbo Ooh, nice Booty hug. there for a little bit of damage as JD Payne finds another death sentence on the Furbo. This guy has been hitting these hooks left and right all game and it has been paying dividends for Carleton University as a 40 CS lead now in the bot lane. Uh, you have to imagine this is going to be this is going to be either the Gale Force or the uh, Kraken Slayer. I'm imagining that it might be the Gale Force this game since there are fewer tanks to thread through and you're going to want that mobility. I'm almost tempted. I don't know how you obviously we don't see it this game. We see the, the pickaxe and oh, as we're going to see a hook oh come my through. Oh god, another hook comes he through on miss. bleed, but down oh. his way down. Solar Flare doesn't connect though and they're just going to walk out. That's okay though. I mean, gives up release some of the pressure on the bot lane. Yeah. Let's doubt go do some other things. What I was going to say is obviously we're not going to see it this game. I'm almost tempted to buy a more though if I'm Kai saw here. Just because mm. you know that you're the priority. You've got Ribbon, Hecarim, Vigar, Zed all coming for you. But mm -hmm. I, I would not, I, I would guess you're right. It's probably going to be the Gale Force here for the mobility as we're going to see Selenic just, you know, just, just going to stun him because he can. Hitting him up a little bit. Oh, using that wow. E-burst to trade back as uh, Jumbo Booty actually getting quite a bit of damage onto low-key parkour. This Echo uh, does very well in the short trades, able to proc that Z-Drive resonance passive and uh, get that damage and then use the MS to run out. So um, as you know, these champions start to get towards their item break points, uh, it'll be fun to see how some of these high mobility assassins can do their battling. As Selenic, uh, more, more, more brawling in the top lane. Uh, Divine Sunderer completed for Tentakai, so that's gonna feel pretty good for him. It's not yeah. feeling and extra damage in these trades. I feel, and if Steve, uh, if we could look at the uh, the gold graph for just a little bit, I would like to see. So yeah, we do see 12, 1300 gold in the top lane is the difference. Yeah. Uh, we do see now though, we talked about how the Udi high, that is no longer, as he is now up a fair chunk of gold in the jungle. We do see, ooh, Dweed already, ooh. they're getting some damage down on the Jumbo Booty. Dweed's gonna get caught out a little bit, but is going to use that shield to stay safe. But another hook on the Furbo is gonna do so much. Dweed oh. finding his way in with the Zenith Blade. Oh as no. A double onslaught does so much work. Selenic has made his way into the back line. It's a shutdown onto the Kaisa, but he's found himself alone in the 1v4, and Aiken is going on a rampage. And the dragon and the fight will both go the way of Carleton College, despite what seemed like a miracle engage there from Dad. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit off with the timing. He was a little bit farther into their back line than it was able to be followed up on by the rest of NYU there. So they do get a big shutdown onto Never Story. Selenic picking up that nice chunk of gold, but three kills and the dragon going the way of Carlton. And it looks like they're going to turn their attention to this second Rift Herald of the game. Surely will be picked up here by Udir. So yeah, I mean, right now it's a little bit shaky if you're NYU as Doubt's going to stop the recall of Jumbo Booty, but going to take a fair bit of damage in return. So we talked about, I was mentioning the Udyr now firmly ahead of this Hecarim. Zed is doing well in gold, but the big difference right now is this Kai'Sa. He's up 2,000 gold on Vigar, and that is very scary. We see the gold lead now about 3,000 overall for uh, for Carlton, and most of that is going to be the 2,000 in the jungle and the 2,000 in the bot lane. Over, out, uh, set a little bit off by Ribbon being ahead of Camille. And of course, a little bit of a gold advantage in the mid lane for the Zed. But right now, Udyr has his second item completed, the uh, Dead Man's Plate, as well as the seven stack Dark Seal, uh, which is an interesting pickup for Aiken. <laughs> uh, but right now it's working. I guess it's, you know what? If you can stack it, why not? Yeah, and you gotta be worried if you're NYU in that last fight, despite having uh, incredibly fed uh, solo laners 
uh, Riven and Zed, both champions that are great at getting into the back line and taking out those AD carries. Uh, Kaisa was still able to run over a lot of that fight and buy so much time. So if they're going to want to contest these next objectives, they're going to have to find uh, really some creative flanks. Um, and it's going to be up to NYU to make those happen. But it is going to be the second Rift Herald taken for NYU. Yeah, they so are actually going to get this. That's nice. Yeah, free, pretty uncontested. Um, they're going to be feeling pretty good about that since they lost that last dragon as the pings are coming in towards the top I, side. And I think part of the issue is this will become less of a problem as picked up. But right now, as... Ooh. Oh, the sweeper will spot him out. Well, the Zenith Blade is going to go in onto JD Payne as the Vagar damage comes through. The Void Seeker did not connect, so the ultimate killer instinct is now not available. Now it's on his way. Four force forward to oh, dodge no. the Solar Flare, and Never Story is doing so much damage. But here comes doubt. Zenith Blade is going to connect onto Never Story, but the charge is not going to come through. But here Lenic is, is here. Line. Now it has taken oh. out Kaisa. She's gone down. Riven is slashing and dashing through the team. It's just gonna be him? Is he gonna keep going? He's not. As the rest of the members of both squads are going to come all the way up, and I believe a two for zero in yeah. favor of NYU there. That ends up being a pretty nice two for zero. Really great collapse from NYU. What turned in what was started as a two a two v one ended up being a five v five very very quickly. But NYU able to find the CC layering that they needed, and now they're gonna get this Rift Herald down into the mid lane. Look to get that tier one turret, which they should do without too much trouble. Uh, as they will get onto that turret. Not quite gonna go down yet, but there it is for Doubt. And that is another, that's a big chunk of gold. What was a 3,000 gold lead 60 seconds ago is now only a 1,000. So really good fight from NYU there as Loki Parkour is able to get away from the Echo. Not quite able to prop, proc that Z Drive passive uh, and he will walk away safely. So good job from NYU. And we're seeing now what I was about to mention is that yes, these solo laners are getting blown up right now. They're a little bit squishy on the side of NYU, but that is becoming less and less of a problem as more items come through. They will be able to get a little bit tankier, and as they become more survivable, they're going to become more and more of a problem for the side of Carlton. Yeah, absolutely. And you can see uh, how the crowd control from the bot lane, uh, Furbo and Deweed, how much that can do to set up these kills on the Never Story. You know, Kaisa has not that much room to work with if she's within that Vagar cage. And if there's a Leona yeah. on top of her, also hitting her with those Shields of Daybreak and Zenith Blades, it makes it even harder to work with. Man, so imagine how much better these fights will go once the, it's a Solar Flare. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's, been, he's been missing all of them. He's been a little bit off, but oh, and speaking of Dweed, oh, nice flash. Yeah, the flash is gonna be forced out of Deweed there. Still has the Hex Flash available um, as the dragon is going to be spawning in about 40 seconds. We are gonna that see was almost cold. really awkward. If he flashes earlier and Camille falls, I think Furbo just dies. Yeah, and absolutely. So that was almost, Deweed almost sacrificed him to the gods, but able to flash away from the Camille and that's not a big loss. You know, obviously flash on Leona is nice, but why not Hex Flash instead? It's basically the same thing. Even better, some would say. Lower cooldown. Lower cooldown, uh, you can use it more often, it's great. You As can cancel it. <laughs> you can cancel it, yeah. You can you change your mind, yeah. Oh, cage okay, comes through. We're missing coming in, actually, is Jumbo Booty is going to be forced to use that ultimate oh, gallop gun. Oh, He's going to find himself into the team as another kill goes over. It is JD Selenic, huge. Last forward with the broken wings on Never Story. Goes Selenic, but it's too little. Never too Story. Late for Never Story. Or no, he's it? still alive. He's able to kite it out. He's shooting the Void Seekers out. And now Aiken can oh my run God. the rampage through this fight. The hook shot finishes the kill. On to doubt this Udyr is just running amok over NYU. And just as the last fight went well for the, the squad in purple, uh, this fight is a completely different story. Sole point over the console. Oh, that looked like a the, the perfect engage for NYU. I was so certain that was gonna go well, but Never Story is somehow able to survive both Riven and Hecarim right on top of him and is able to get out with his life. And he dealt so much damage in that fight. And Tentakai was able to get back, get the engage the other direction. And somehow NYU is forced away after a, what was I think a 4v2, excuse me, a 4 for 2. So really, really close to being the perfect fight, but ends up going the way of Carlton. And that's a crucial third dragon picked up for Carlton now that puts them on this soul point at about 28 minutes. So 
NYU really close to finding the right engage, but just not quite able to get enough damage down onto the carries of Carlton to finish it off. Yeah, and you want to be saving this Vagar ultimate for Kaisa, but when you're running at her and she's kiting back with the Gale Force and with she's so the far instinct, away, eventually she gets to a point oh. where she's just out of range. This Jumbo Booty here might have been caught. Oh, he hit the Solar Flare! flare. flare. Yes, baby, and it's a kill over to low key parkour. A little bit gotten back by NYU, and it is just a 2,000 gold lead here for Carlton. Furbo, uh, gonna proc the electric cube with the flash oh, oh, oh. in to the promoter burst is gonna take him oh, down no. to almost nothing. But Tentakai is there with the tactical sweep. So close for Furbo, and he has to be feeling bad about that one. Yeah, Furbo really nearly solo killing never story. And I think the reality was he saw the collapse coming and he was like, look. I'm dead here no matter what. I might as Take well try and get that time uh, And he very nearly did, as we see. Yes, Vigar is really behind, but it is still a Vigar versus an AD carry. And as an AD carry, I tell you, that is never a fun place to be if you are a Kaisaw. So, very nearly done. But, man, a little bit just chaotic and messy all over the place, as we've been talking about. Soletic here is farming pretty well, but, you know, it's, it's starting to get to that point in the ribbon game where he, he's... He needs to really worry about getting CC locked by the Zudir and this Camille, and, and needs to be able to get onto that Kaisa in a way he hasn't yet been able to. And it's a little bit tough. Yeah, and I think even even scarier is the fact that Selenic has actually been doing a pretty good job of getting onto Kaisa, but he's never True. had enough damage to actually seal the deal and, and get the kill. And even when he has been able to, Aiken on this Udir has just been running amok with the bear stance and the phoenix stance, stunning up all of the members uh, of NYU who are mostly melee and just none of them can do anything about this. Well, and, He's running all over the place. I'd also like to give credit to JD Payne here on this thresh, doing Absolutely. a great job of peeling. The locket use has been on point. The flays have been really crucial in helping this AD carry that is so important stay alive. And you see, I mean, four and three now, this Camille who is so behind is now not nearly as behind. Udyr, obviously, 6, 2, and 4, has the full Magi Soul Stealer now, because why not? Uh, and we do see now the priority moving down towards the Dragon again. Wave is pushing into top lane as the Echo is going to match that. We do see Loki Parkour moving up to maybe do some, get some damage down. But right now, this priority over Dragon is really important. And it feels like NYU is a little bit on the back foot. As we see the items come through, the item timings are just not quite there for NYU yet either. Yeah, you mentioned Ooh, crucially though, Zanya's was just picked up for Furbo. He did okay. just finish that. That's big. Yeah, so that will help him peel away from some of these divers on the side of Carlton in the fights, but it is just uh, all NYU can do to watch their jungle can take oh, away a little bit uh, of a from doubt, but the rest of those camps are going to go over to Carlton. I believe the red buff on the blue side was secured there by Never Story, so he's going to be feeling pretty good about that pickup. Um, but I want to highlight something you said earlier. As, uh, might be a little bit of a skirmish. Not quite. Um, I do want to highlight something you said earlier about how uh, when Tentakill was looking for that hook shot and forced the flash out of Deweed, that if he had connected that onto Furbo, he would have killed him. At that point, I believe Ka uh, Camille was like one in three and yeah. probably still the damage to like one shot this Vigar. Yeah. At this point, Camille is four and three. She's got yeah. two items completed. She's got the stopwatch. This champion got scary. very much now is a very real threat um, that NYU is going to have to add to their list of things to All worry right. about. Well, we are going to get a fight over this dragon. It is Soul coming up for Carlton. So NYU needs to contest this. Every member is here. All the subs are up. And this will be a skirmish for the ages. Right now, a little bit of damage on Aiken, but not the person you really want targeted as JD Ooh. Payne looks for a hook, misses it, which is a rarity, as they yeah. are pushing in. Right now, yeah, it's the battle over the vision as Carlton does have the priority. Core's a little bit cut. He's a little far away. He went to push in mid wave, and this might be the time that... Mid, oh, look JD under... Payne hits the death sentence onto the Vagar as the fight is going to break out. Selenic is able to take a kill as the Solar Flare connects. Oh, on course, on Never Story. Onslaught of Shadows goes on a Never Story, but completely misses as the Kai'Sa is kiting back. There's Plasma on Selenic? all NYU members with a flash forward from Selenic. How is he alive? Take Never Story out of the fight, and it is Carlton that on one oh, is going to limp away, but the ribbon is just 
two <laughs> mobile. She cleans up one. She might look for another uh, as Zelenic could look for this dive into the tower. The key burst is going to the next as the third broken wings will also knock up, but I don't think Zelenic has the damage for this. Uh, well, oh, oh Zelenic, he might. Oh, it gets oh. Trigger. Oh wow, Zelenic is an animal. Off the back of some greedy stays there by Carlton. NYU is going to be able to go for Baron here. Yeah, this is just going to be Baron, like, really cleanly. Great fight from NYU. Verbo got hooked, but he instantly Zanya's, and the, they committed so hard to trying to kill that Vygar that they just, they, they ran into these layered AoE CC abilities. The Solar Flare hit two members. Onslaught of uh, Shadows maybe only hit, you know, one didn't quite hit the Never Story, but still hit three members. You know, the, the Ribbon was able to just wreak havoc. So great fight from NYU, not forcing it. And this was something we've talked about the last couple of weeks where when they let teams force into them, they play this react game style of these team fights and are able to, you know, punish people. They do really, really well. And we saw that right there. Carlton got a little bit impatient, tried to force the fight onto NYU and they ended up getting five for one. They lost the dragon, they lost the Baron, and all of a sudden, NYU feels like they might be taking the lead in this game. It is now a 2K gold lead over to the side of NYU as the last couple of fights had looked a little sketchy for them, but were able to turn it around and deny the soul point. Crucially there, Selenic doing so much work in that fight. Eight kills on this yeah. ribbon as NYU now, uh, purple team wearing purple. They've got the Baron buff, and they are going to play these side lanes with these incredibly strong solo laners that they have for themselves. Yeah, they have a beautiful 1-3-1 comp here, actually, because the Zed is able to just really cleanly push in bot lane. Obviously, Selenic is not going to lose a 1v1 against anyone in the game right now, so he's able to push in top, and you're able to keep this mid laner safe with Doubt and Daweed, as it is actually four minutes. The Solar Flare is popped there, Aiken does know that takes advantage, is caged off, but here is Pentakai and the rest of the team. The Hexback ultimatum is going to go on to Dweeb there, and Furbo is blown up. The Unthought of Shadows does a little bit to buy time, but the players have made their way in. It's going to be one kill back over to NYU, and it is all Carlton can do to try and run away and buy time. That totally Maybe cut off. Maino with a beautiful play to keep Selenic off of his AD carry, and an amazing death sentence will keep the ribbon. Never story set, though. Up. Oh, the doubt is here. Oh, Selenic is just huge. It's so is low-key parkour. Oh, oh, my God. And oh, the quadra. Kill going over to the side of Loki Parkour on the Zed. Some beautiful play there by the bot side of Carleton University, but uh, the Hecarim is just too unstoppable at this point. He's just running over all of their team members, and this is going to be at least an inhibitor for NYU. They've got quite quite long death timers still on Jumbo Booty. I don't know, with Aiken already being up, if they probably are just gonna take this inhibitor and get out, I would imagine. No, they're looking for more. Here comes the hex blast. <laughs> they are just going to back off. But the, the big story of that fight was, of course, the engage was a little sketchy because it was actually a, a 4v3 in favor of Carlton at the beginning of that. Because Loki Parkour was in the bot lane, and unbeknownst to him, Tetakai, who had been matching him, had already walked up. However, he came back. Loki Parkour was able to get there quickly. Selenic TP'd, and... Uh, Jumbo Booty on this Echo TP'd as well, but the ward that Jumbo Booty TP'd to was significantly farther away from where the fight was happening than Selenic. So Selenic was able to turn this into a 5v4, even though the TPs were matched, because of how far Echo TP'd away. He was he was he still had a bunch of distance to walk, and it ended up being that by the time he got to the fight, it was basically over. So great job from Selenic pulling that trigger and getting that TP down when he needed to. NYU turning what looked like a bad fight into a really good one, and they're now up almost five, five and a half thousand gold and, and looking like they're in control of this game. Yeah, and even if NYU is in the driver's seat now, you have to give so much credit over to the bot lane of Carleton uh, University playing yeah. that last fight so incredibly well. Uh, so many uh, hooks, uh, JD, Stor or JD Payne threading the needle to lock up Selenic on Riven, but it just isn't quite enough as the dragon is here spawning in 20 seconds. And you have to imagine that NYU is going to pick this one up. Well, and I don't, we haven't given a lot of, you know, talked about him a lot this game, but Loki Parkour, I mean, he's 11 and Zed now, and 
has been able to get a lot of really crucial damage onto. He hasn't quite been able to get to Never Story, but that's okay because he's just been, you know, kill Tentakai is just dying. Like, mm -hmm. you know, this Camille is just dying to the Zed, and it's been a it's been really impactful when you don't have the lockdown that Camille offers onto the back line of NYU. It's been really, really important. So the third dragon picked up here for NYU, which means that five minutes from now, if we even get there, I guess I'm not really sure we will, uh, will be sold for either team who picks it up. But for now, NYU is looking to push in some of these remaining towers. They are going to get this bot tier two without any resistance. And uh, we're getting to this point. I mean, look at the items now on the side of NYU. Riven has four items complete, does have that Guardian Angel done. So you have to kill her twice. Uh, the Zed is got the Lord Dominic's regards, has the uh, Eclipse, the Ravenous Hydra as well. Uh, almost the Rabadon's death cap completed for Vigar, and that is a huge spike once he gets there. Even if he is behind, just by the nature of his passive and the stacks he has, he has 224 stacks, which means that Ravenous uh, Rabadon's death cap will give him, oh, I don't know, 180. He's got 600 AP already. Yeah, he doesn't have Rabadon, Rabadon's yet, so <laughs> that's going to be really scary. And these item timings are starting to come through in, for NYU in a way that they were for Carlton previously. Carlton was having these items advantage, but. All of a sudden, NYU has these completed items, and it's really important. So we will see how that plays out the rest of this game. Baron is up in 20 seconds. I assume that will be prioritized by both of these teams. Uh, but NYU right now, they have the vision. If we could actually... Selenic... Okay, if Steve, if we could take a quick look. Yeah, that's perfect, actually. If you look at the vision differences on the minimap, Carlton doesn't see anything. NYU, on the other hand, they've got all of these entrances to the top side of the map covered, and... That's going to be really important for this topside fight, where if you know exactly where that Kai'Sa is coming from, it allows you to play around it in a way that Carlton doesn't. But here we go. We might get the fight right here. Hook is going to go wide from JD Payne as the Kai'Sa is going to be pushing in the mid wave. Both teleports available for the top laners who are now bot lane. Um, but it is going to be, like you said, the vision battle here as the Baron has just spawned with the Solar Flare is going to come in. Aiken has taken a lot of CC, but he is so, so tanky as the box is going to find the disengage. The Tentakai has committed oh. the Hexter made him. It connects on the Furbo as the Death Sentence lands on the Dweeb. This could be the fight for Carlton, but Selenic has made his way into the back line. Low-key parkour has found one. Oh He's my god, Selenic. And Never Story has gone down in his two little... Too late for Carlton. A quadra kill, I believe that was. Nope, a triple nope. for Loki Parkour and a double for Selenic. It is the story of this game. These two destroying this game on the solo queue. Carry champions. And NYU is going to take the first game against Carlton University. Wow. So, I mean, that was just a textbook fight. That It was easy to call because that one was just played by NYU to perfection. They were patient. They waited for the Kai'Sa to be in a place that they could punish. Selenic dived the back line, killed the Kai'Sa. Everyone else died to the Zed. And that is the first game going the way of NYU. It was a little shaky there, but really, really well done from NYU in that second half of the game. Figuring out what they needed to do to play it. Figuring out what they needed to do to win it, and it will be a 1-0 lead for NYU. Yeah, we talked about how uh, ease of execution was on the side of Carleton University there, but if NYU could pull the rabbit out of the hat and make it work, uh, that they would come ahead with the win, and that's exactly what happened. So NYU going to be leading the series. Um, what do you want to see here out of Carleton, and maybe out of NYU too, who by no means played a perfect game? Uh, Ooh, yeah, that was a mess. Think, yeah, if you want to see here. <laughs> It was a mess that they won, but it was a mess. Uh, man, I I think that, first of all, I think that they they have the right idea. Put Selenic on something he can play on, especially when you don't have maybe the practice with Furbo. I have no idea how much practice they've gotten going into this week with him. And uh, we will talk to Mystery Man here in a couple of minutes, so we will be able to ask him. Uh, but I think that, you know, I like that the Selenic was on a carry. I doubt he'll get the Riven again, uh, so it'll probably have to be something else. But... I think that for the side of NYU, the biggest thing is it was they just need to communicate better. It, it felt like there was definitely moments in that game where they were on different pages and plays got made that weren't quite set up right. On the other side, I think Carlton got impatient. I think Carlton had control in that early game because they were playing around the objectives. But okay, uh, 
good to know. I'll share production giving us an interesting note. We'll share that in a second. Uh, but I think Carlton was was doing a good job of staying patient and taking fights that they knew they could win in the early game. And as NYU got more disciplined over the course of that game, Carlton, on the other hand, came unraveled and and had trouble not taking these engages that NYU wanted them to take. And they got punished for it. So I think the biggest thing is that NYU needs to keep staying patient. They need to keep playing that play style. But they also need to make sure that, you know, they're they're diving in the back line when they need to. And we saw that from Selenic and from Loki Parkour. On the other side, Carlton needs to play around objectives and play to their strengths in a way that I don't think they did for the, the end of that game. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. So, okay. Uh, we're getting word now that we are actually already into draft, getting right into game two. Uh, no rest to wicked, as it were. Yeah. And as... and to be clear, so Extramatic's back. Extramatic's back. We got him. He's back. Yeah. 80 carry Extramatic, best 80 carry in all of Battlefy. I haven't uh I haven't confirmed that, but I'm gonna go with it. Yeah. This, this, Until someone stats don't lie. lie. Uh lie. yeah, I mean, look, he's the best AD carry I've seen in all of the battle fight bracket. There you go. And uh therefore he must be the best. Makes sense to me. Um, but it is not extramatic, but it is low key parkour who was uh instilling fear into the hearts of Carlton last game and earning himself not one, but two first round mid lane bans with both yeah. the Talon and the Zed taken away. Interesting that the Bard is being taken off the table for NYU. This game, um, the Shen and the Kha'Zix were both also taken away in game one. Um, so I'd be curious Riven's available. Riven is available. Uh, but so is Hecarim. Uh, I think Hecarim and Pryo, yeah, why not? Yeah, get it on there. This guy's going to be the Udyr Kaisa again, too. I don't think yeah. they're going to change that. So it, it, this is interesting if Carlton goes for this because it's basically saying that um, there were parts of the last game that worked out for them, but they want to make uh, some small... Oh, action, okay. And it's going to be the Seraphine is where they're going to find that. Um, a lot of the problems that Carlton ran into last game were in the team fights. They want to add some of that uh, uh, AoE healing and crowd control that Seraphine offers um, to, to their team comp. And interestingly... This can go anywhere. This can be a support. This can be a mid laner. This can be a eighty carry. So I like the early Seraphine pick, and it's going to be answered by the Brom for NYU. Okay, this is interesting. I think that here's my opinion on Seraphine. I'll sum it up really, really simply. Seraphine is the best champion in League of Legends right now. Done, dusted. That's the end of story. Yeah, there you go. The amount of control over a fight you get with Encore is yeah. unfair, yeah. and this is a really, really powerful pick. However, why, why does it do that? Okay, it's going to be the Senna picked up. So, Extramatic playing the Senna here. He's only played three champions this year. This is, in fact, one of them. Uh, and okay, so I'm getting word as well. Uh, they are pa pr have been practicing a lot of this Senna stuff, I'm, I'm assuming, as well with the Braum, uh, the on hit Senna. We've seen it actually three times already uh, on the side of, of NYU. And I will give you a little bit of a hint here. Extramatic's really good at Senna. And when I say really good at Senna, so far, he has played three games of Senna. He has a 16 KDA and a 90% kill participation. Those are not stats you hear from an AD carry very often. No. This is his best champion. It is the champion he has dominated on so far. And this is the time, right? Trunch time. Get a clean 2-0 over a team that honestly coming in, I would have... I'm going to be honest, I felt I felt like Carlson was probably the favorites in this matchup. Mm -hmm. Getting a clean 2-0 here going into the last week is huge. So we do see the final bands come through. It's the ribbon taken away on the side of Carlson. And it will be the Cho'Gath and a player to be named later. Uh, who is it going to be? We'll see the final band here from NYU. So what do you think so far of these two comps? Um... You know, I'm 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 looking a lot at this Aphelios here. Uh, Aphelios uh, and Seraphine actually both really good at doing um, at defend protecting against the team that NYU ran last game. Uh, they're really good if you have people running at you that you can just kind of shoot at. Come, that you can just shoot at while they're charging forward. Um, Aphelios uh -huh. has the turret. He's got the ultimate that's easier to hit if they're running at you. Of course, he's really good at kiting. It's kind of a kite team composition, which makes me a little weirded out that they're uh, opting for a Riven and Kassadin ban. You know, these are the champions that 
if they pick Riven and Cassidy, you're you're okay with because they're going to beat these characters. So I'm a little interested in what's going on with the draft there. And this is exactly why I also think the Senna is so good here because Senna is going to be outranging both of those people. She's just going to be shooting at them from the back line. And she's going to make Serafina Felios walk up to her to try and close that gap, which is very a dangerous spot for those two champs to be in. Well, um, and yeah. something I'd like to mention too is what we're seeing here is, yes, we saw a really solo QE last, uh, last game. And I'd also like to give a shout out. Furbo is in our chat. Hi, Furbo. What's up, uh, Furbo? And, uh, but we're seeing now, this is the team that NYU scrims with, right? This is their normal lineup, extra matic here in this 80 carry slot. And you're seeing now, this is a much more, and I guess I would even call it professional draft from NYU. They have a really cohesive goal. They know what they want to be doing. They want a team fight, and they're going to do it well. And mm -hmm. I agree with you that, yes, they've got this sort of kite comp going on for Carlton, but it doesn't feel nearly as cohesive. Like, mm -hmm. I, I guess we'll see here. This could, this is probably going to be a mid laner. It could actually be a top laner. It could be a support. Who knows? Seraphine and Gragas are both flexed all over the place right now. But uh, it is going to be the Mordekaiser as the final pick in the top lane. So it's going to be, I believe, the Seraphine support yeah uh, looks like it's gonna be seraphine support and then mordecai's are mid into the echo okay makes sense not not yeah. super surprising there uh but i i guess i i just feel like their comp isn't as cohesive like, this udi likes yes he can kite but also the gragas likes to run towards them and the mordecai's is not terrible at kiting i don't know just feels a little all over the place so I do think that there is definitely some some potential for NYU to get punished if they get too greedy trying to force a team fight. But generally, I think that NYU's comp is really good right now. What do you think? Yeah, I think it is going to be very hard for this Echo to play the game. Yeah, uh, that's especially true. Especially with Mordekaiser. I think it's very easy for him to get hit by the Encore, um, to get hit by a Felios auto attacks, and of course, Udir, who's auto attack stunned if you're in melee range, with Echo, which Echo likes to do. So... I think a lot of this game is actually going to be on Extramatic to play that range advantage that NYU have uh, with Senna versus kind of a Felios Seraphine. Because um, if, you know, the rest of their front line tries to walk in, they they might get torn up by that by that crowd control. Absolutely. We have a guest. Yes. So, uh, everybody, we have a, a special guest here in the booth with, uh, with us. Uh, Mystery Van, welcome to the stream. Uh, excited to have you. Ooh, we even got you on camera today. Yeah, I got me on cam. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so uh, first of all, uh, talk us through a little bit. I was, We were sort of curious. We didn't get to know exactly what the deal was with Furbo subbing in in this game one. Uh, sort of last, what happened with that? So um, at first it just seemed like our ADC wasn't there and wasn't responding to any of our calls okay. or anything. So we had a bit of a panic. Luckily we had Furbo and he was able to play um and i've learned recently so there's a fire in our adc's building so he had to deal with that he's back yeah um, fortunately um wasn't able to get into his so fortunately everyone's okay and it's all it's all okay i hard to blame him for something like that right yeah absolutely so, glad to have everyone back for this game and well come it... in verbo played great oh I, yeah i'm actually really happy with how that went so yeah. you know best result yeah, so definitely given... go Go ahead, Ed. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, especially given what, what was kind of a hard game to play Vigar into, um, with, uh. with the Camille on top of him all game. So props to Furbo for doing that. Yeah. So yes, obviously, <laughs> talk for a, a quick minute about the previous draft. Uh, we we mentioned, I don't know if you were watching our, our, our commentary on it, but we, we kept calling it a bit of a solo queue draft. Uh, and I think I think you could agree that it felt that way a little bit. But, you know, Selenic on Riven, and obviously, you know, Doubt on this Hecker has been so good all year. Um, I just if you want to give me like a quick nutshell of what your goals were into this, you know, surprise difference in team comp going into last game. Um, so because of the emergency, we knew that we kind of had to pick what's going on. Furbo is in an ADC, so we decided pretty early we're going to pick Vagar and just flex it bot. Um, and they didn't expect they they just thought it was mid for some reason. Yeah, they banned two eighty um, carries second phase. Yeah, that fortunately for us, right? So with that in mind, then we decided that. Um, we well, I talked to Slank before the game and, and said that Riven was a really high probability pick for us, um, given that top is a big win con for Carlton. So that's his best champion. I mean, one of he's a really talented Riven player, as you saw. Yeah. Um, and so while it kind of seems solo queue, the 
the Riven pick, we just tried to put everyone in a position to succeed, right? Doubt on Hecarim, Loki on Zed, uh, Slinic on Riven, and then just something really safe bot lane that fortunately didn't bleed as much as it could have, um, especially with that level one. Yeah. Um, so that's just kind of the the process, which is make it work. Well, it that it work it did obviously escaping game one with an emergency sub against what is a really talented team in Carlton mm -hmm. uh, with a win here in game one is huge. So, uh, Aaron, Aaron, you got something? Yeah, I just I actually wanted to ask. You mentioned the Zed. Um, this is the second game in a row that we've you've blinded assassins, kind of these these yeah. uh, harder to play uh, blind champions for low key. Is that your is that a read on the meta that these champions are strong, or is this comfort, or can you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, uh, it's slightly a read on the meta, but it's really a play into comfort and a counter to what their mid likes to do, which is like Ori Syndra. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we just kind of decided that, like, also, Loki is just like, he's our debatably our best player, right? Like, high grandmasters. Like, so we, we can afford to blind him onto things he's super comfortable with. And the fact that it forces their mid laner onto stuff that maybe he's a bit more uncomfortable on or they're more uncomfortable on. Uh, is is beneficial for us. So we're, mean, we're perfectly comfortable doing it this game. Zed Echo is not a good matchup for Zed, but it, it, it looked like that. It looked like it was when when Loki Park. He should have killed him. He he whiffed so hard. Yeah, he missed his level Q, three. Like, point blank. Yeah. Oh um, gosh. So yeah. let's talk a little bit about this draft. We have obviously it's clear that the priority has been all season on Hecarim. I mean, B1 Hecarim is the thing, and uh, getting it both games here, a second game after that performance, or yeah. doubt on it. Uh, seems really powerful. So we talked a little bit last week, actually, about the Hecarim and then letting them have Udyr, but they changed it up with the Seraphine this time. Uh, yeah. And you still went with the Senna Braum. Obviously, Senna... He, I, I was looking at the stats. Uh, Extra Medic has a 16 KDA on Senna this year, <laughs> uh, which is <laughs> unreal. Uh, I don't wow. think that's possible. Um, but a little bit of a different comp, a, a little bit more of what I would call a professional comp. And... Going in now that you have extra Matic back, uh, like really, what's your focus going? What are you trying to exploit in Carlton's gameplay with this? Um, more than exploit, we're just going back to what we're good at. Um, this is very much a comp that we've been playing all year, and we know we play well. We got the Hecarim, we got a stable bot lane that we know we can execute on, and we've been holding the Braum counter pick for Seraphine games. We ran it in scrims really? this week, and we okay. really like uh, the Braum will get charms, but he'll block. And get rid of the Seraphine ult. So it's a nice counter. Um, really, it's just taking advantage of what we know we're good at and doing our best to get stable lane matchups. Um, and I think I think with that, we'll, we'll play well. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously, letting Doubt run around on the horse has seemed to exactly. be a winning formula so far. Uh, Why do they keep giving it to us? I don't, I don't it, know. So It's an all our so vibe. It's on, he is it's now... On. I don't know exactly what his KDA last game was. I don't have it pulled up, but... He's now 4-0 with an 8-ish KDA on Hecarim. Yeah, right. <laughs> so definitely a little bit questionable. Uh, but good matchup so far. Uh, the Braum counter pick is interesting. Three. Okay, so uh, quick math. His KDA last game was 12.5. Uh, so, you know, improving those numbers a little bit. So interesting, like you said, about into the Seraphine. Uh, and interesting also, teams keep giving you blue side. What's that about? <laughs> I I don't know <laughs> I don't know we keep well up up until this week we'd always been the one seed and so we've been just picking blue side game one and then sometimes teams will give it to us game, game two, two. <laughs> that's the yeah uh, so so this week though we were the lower seed so right. they gave us blue game one and we chose blue game two um mm. uh, I. We're we're more comfortable warding on blue side, so that's one reason we keep picking it. Um, well, and you get to pick the Hecarim every game, so why not? Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Seems pretty good. Exactly. I actually, it, it's actually I... terrible. All my draft prep this week was for red side. All oh, of it. Oh really? Oh no. Almost all of it. I was expecting red side, but it, it worked. Suffering it's worked from out. success. Right. So I actually do want to ask you about about the Hecarim pick because you've mm -hmm. you've be won it twice. Um, you're having great success on it. Um, I was surprised that it was as high priority, given the recent jungle changes, um, to XP and gold. Uh, what do you? What has been your kind of your team? Without giving away too much, of course. Um, <laughs> what is your team's kind of read on on how that's going to affect the jungle meta, especially when you have been playing these like farming carry junglers a lot? Um, it, it's tough because this week, it's a really short week for the patch, so it's really hard to get a meta read and 
three days. So that that's something I've been really frustrated with, actually. I don't like how that functions in Seelaw, but um, it, Hecarim has gank potential, too, and, and it stops opponents from stepping up too far in lane. Um, so it, it, it is, I think it will be useful on this patch, regardless. Um, for the same reason, I think Udyr will be useful, regardless. Um, full clears being worthless doesn't mean that, like, you shouldn't full clear, I guess, is the best way of putting and it. My you understanding still get is, it, is and... full clear is still level 4. It, yeah, it, yeah, it is, so... from my understanding as well. Yeah. Um, now, I don't I don't know enough. Yeah, I, you should talk to my jungler about it. He I knows don't know. More. I don't think any of us are junglers, so yeah, <laughs> it's I'm all not. theoretical I'm, around here. I'm a Lulu one-trick yeah, mid, dude. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> really? Well, it's broken. Well, Give it a try in your solo queue games, everyone. Lulu mid. Okay. <laughs> Just rush your stun. I believe we are about past the delay phase. Uh, mm -hmm. Mystery Van, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, feel free, even if you want, honestly, to stick around. You don't have to, but but if you want, if you want to, uh, I'll, but also I'm going to hop out to because do. I spectate a little bit ahead of you guys. Yeah, sure. And so it's go a little easier team, for you. Go cheer them on. We're going to hop into game here, Mystery Van. Thank you as always. We will talk to you soon. Good luck in game number two, and uh, we will talk to you shortly. Appreciate, it, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Well, all right, everybody, we are going to head over to Summoner's Rift for game numbers two between NYU and Carleton University. NYU, of course, is on the blue side, and Carleton is on the red side. Uh, that looks like champ select. Aha, there's a game. There we go. Beautiful. Mr. Van, as always, uh, joining us and doing an excellent job answering our questions. Uh, we love him and appreciate him. And, uh, you know, it's really, we, we talked about it, but I think... Uh, People underestimate the influence, even at the collegiate level, of coaches on, on game. And uh, Mystery Band does a great job with this team. The, the the improvement, even from week one to this week, we've seen in like their their play style and cohesiveness and ability to play the map. And I think Mystery Band deserves a hell of a lot of credit for that. So, uh, yeah, a lot of appreciation for him uh, for making our, our team as good as it is. But uh, enough about Mystery Band, because we've got some gameplay. Yeah, we got to see what's going to happen in game two here. Um, looked like there might be a little bit of a level one from NYU as they were all stacking in that bush. Uh, could also have been a, ended up being a defensive stack. Um, they saw that Carlton went for that level one invade. So just protecting against that, I think, is a totally good move. Um, looking at the keystones, though, I do want to point out that this is an AP Gragas. He is a Comet. So this guy is going to be doing a lot of damage, a lot of magic damage actually on this Carlton uh, team comp with three AP and Udyr of course doing a lot of magic damage. We are going to see both junglers starting on the top side. So like last game, there will be a bit of a skirmish maybe around that bot scuttle. I believe we saw that Doubt was able to get the scuttle crab and then ended up losing the fight. Um, so I actually wonder if these junglers are both expecting the bottom start from each other, but are both trying to miss each other and are gonna end up colliding. So could be a little bit of an awkward moment there um, as the level twos are gonna be hit here by the solo laners. Uh, Selenic, uh, I have never seen him play play Gnar uh, or anything other than like these aggressive Camille ribbon picks. Uh, tell me about his, like, his play on these tanks. Uh, you know, I haven't, we haven't seen as much of it. Let's put it that way first. This is his first NAR game of the year. Uh, his other picks this year, obviously he played, he's played three games of Camille, three games of Ribbon, as now uh, he's played Silas, Renekton, Wukong, and Orn. Uh, the Orn game was a travesty. <laughs> uh, the Orn game uh, was, was rough for a lot of reasons, uh, not the least of which it was a 22 minute loss to Penn State. So uh, that one was just rough all around, but but these tanks are not something he's as much on. But also, I don't know, Gnar is not a typical tank, right? You, there's a lot of outplay potential still on this Gnar, a lot of ability to really show off your skill. And it'll be interesting to see how he's able to, you know, we, we've seen from his ribbon play that he loves getting into the back line. And, and well, why not do it with an ultimate that can hit all five members of the enemy? Yeah. And I, I, I'm excited to see how that would look. Engage your spot lane. Yeah, we were talking oh, about the 
fan gang can oh. hear he is doing it. A kill is gonna be traded back by Never Story, but the concussive blows are gonna lock down another stun. It is a double kill for Doubt. That's dramatic. Duncan has made his way down, but uh, the red buff is going to be applied to him. Hecarim has the movement speed. He's got the auto oh. attack. It is a triple kill for Doubt. Wow. A skirmish that is. Uh, overall, three for two, but this Hecarim is going to be a problem. Yikes. He's going to pick up three kills and the Skull Crab on the bottom side. He's up at four minutes. He's up 700 gold in the jungle. Woof. And <laughs> that's really scary. One kill going over to the Aphelios, but actually the Aphelios ended up with the same amount of gold as Senna because of the three assists. Yeah. We see that gold difference not being meaningful at all. Yeah. And you know, Seraphine has okay, 150 extra an extra that's that's the difference in the bot lane. And yeah. that's huge. That is a great job from NYU. Little bit messy with that Aphelios picking up that kill, and obviously the Udir getting one as well. But Udir getting a kill here, I would say is a lot less meaningful when all three go on to death because now he has so much control of his jungle. So great job from NYU. Really, really good skirmish in the bot lane in what is a safe, stable lane, but it's become even more so that way. So yeah, good stuff. Good way to start the game. Yeah, you can see that looking at the items, Aiken completing the Merc Treads on the first back, which is not a, by any measure a, a bad recall, but the Kindle Gem and the Sheen both completed for Doubt, getting those early combat stats. This guy is going to be doing so much damage uh, as we get into these uh, level 6 breakpoints for these characters. So, uh, yeah, Doubt's going to be feeling pretty good here. Yeah, uh... Definitely really, really ahead. Oh, teleport. Oh, here we go. Glenic level. Yeah, the bot lane. We talked about uh, it's oh, mostly it's parkour, parkour, actually. He's going to be channeling the teleport oh. and is going to get an easy kill on to Never Story. But the double TP has been channeled in by Tentakai and by Jumbo Booty. It is one traded back. Here's the hacker out has arrived. Uh, Extramatic is just free hitting. Oh, here no. Low key parkour died. He's received the kill back. And it is a two. <laughs> for one two for two i believe three uh, for even kills three, three for, for two, two. Uh, who, who even died yeah, three for two. yeah okay three for two. so we three died two. and loki died and then on the other side uh never story dirtbag and tentakai died so yes. three kills for nyu two kills for carlton but it's gonna be a dragon for nyu for free Doubt has five kills now. Yeah. <laughs> that is one heck of a horse. Yeah. Yeah, able to get in there with all that AoE damage. He's up 1,500 gold. He's just cleaning up <laughs> all over the map. Um, and I think what we're seeing here from Carlton is trying to expose as... Hold on, oh, he's back. He's got oh, the, uh, no. a lot of shadows. And Never Story has been bullied this entire oh. game, and it's another kill over to Doubt. They gotta reset this guy's gold, or he's gonna be worth nothing soon. Oh. <laughs> Doubt is six and zero oh at six and a half minutes. Kill a minute, baby. We One talked, kill a minute. You know, our focus on the mystery van interview was why the heck do they keep giving this guy Hecarim? Yeah. Uh, Aaron, why the heck do they keep giving this guy Hecarim? I don't he know. He keeps why going up on it. Him. He's got over a ten KDA going into this game on the champion this year. And that is showing no signs of slowing down. Loki Parkour in a little bit of trouble. He is in the Death Realm, but the stun does come through and is able to get out without too much trouble there. The thing about Mordekaiser is, you know, he really wants to be able to get onto his lane of point with that Death Realm and make stuff happen. But Echo's so hard because not only is he able to stun you, is he able to dash away, and the stun is really easy to connect in that confined space, but the ultimate from Echo as well is able to really relieve a lot of that pressure. So we're going to see a 2v2 in the mid lane. Yeah, Loki Parkour is going to be jumping in, uh, getting a little bit of damage onto Aiken, but it's not going to be. Doubt has Divine Sunderer. He has completed his mythic item already versus <laughs> the Ruby Crystal and Merc Treads on oh, the side no. of Aiken. And I think what we've been seeing here, Delta, is um, the side of Carlton uh, trying to play aggressively onto this Braum Senna, which is a lane that. It's like, so safe. Well, it's so safe, but but it also importantly, um, there's a little bit of missed synergy between the two. Uh, sure. Senna's not very good at all at proccing the Braum passive. So theoretically, um, in a straight up 2v2 fight, it is going to go the way of Carlton just from like a damage standpoint. Yeah. However... Braum's so good at disengaging from that 2v2 though, to be fair, right. and so is Senna. 
Well, and if Hecarim shows up too, then well, it hardly matters if you win it, the 2v2 because it's, it's, it's not very a 2v2 true. anymore. And, and so this and, has been punished. Sorry, I keep interrupting you, but I, what I was going to say is really good. Understanding that this was probably going to be the game style that Carlton wanted to play, and that was like, well, I guess I'll just hang out bot lane for the five minutes. And as a result, he now has six kills. Yeah, uh, so, good. and I talked in the pregame about how I think that they need to play to their win conditions and be a little bit more patient. Carlton does. And while I do think that maybe there's some room for aggression in this bot lane, Aphelios and the you know the Mordekaiser and the Gragas all scale so well that I think they maybe got a little overzealous trying to make things happen, especially after the first time it went poorly. You know, for them to not after the first time go, okay, let's try something different, but to then try again and, and get punished again, uh, it's it just it's it's hard. It's it's not good for Carlton here, and they did get punished by the Hecarim. Um, so, 7-4, to four, about a 700 gold lead, that's about it, but all of that gold is on a very, very... That Dragon's be a problem for Carlton moving forward. We do see the Udyr looking for something bought, but Hecarim is in the area. Yeah, he's uh, He's just gonna recall. They have no vision of him looking for the counter gank. Uh, it's so interesting to me that both of these sides keep coming back to the bot lane. Um, as like, I don't know if it's a read on the fact that they think the other jungler is going to be there or if they just think that this is where they need to win the game through. But there is so much action happening in this bot lane in the early game and it has resulted in nothing but good things for NYU and specifically Doubt as a nice freeze. Uh, not quite a freeze actually, but um, NYU's got the wave on their side here. And I'd just like to say Extramatic has a 100%. Yeah, he's got seven assists. <laughs> This guy's playing support Senna. Yeah, why yeah, not? Why not? Crazy. Um, yeah, and you can see that, you know, they've gotten to the point where Braum uh -oh. is able to do quite a bit. Oh, Doubt is here. The 2v2 is going to be found in the mid lane. The Death Realm is going to connect on the low key parkour, but Lord he key parkour might just, just kill him. It as the onslaught of shadows will flee Aiken back into the arms of the Echo. Doubt wow. is godlike, and this is going to be a free dragon in 30 seconds for NYU. And we're seeing the difference here when this Udyr is behind, so far behind this Hecarim, he just doesn't get to play the map. I mean, Hecarim is every... Doubt is just dominating this game in all aspects. 7-0-1 now on this Hecarim. They're going to just push in this mid tower at 11 minutes, and get a good chunk of these plates. They might even get, not quite, they're not going to get the whole tower, I don't think, but I think they're going to get all four platings mid. And, oh, they might, ha actually, yeah, Loki Parkour is just going to yeah. get mid tower. Oh, wow. So much gold going into the pockets of the Echo here. And, and just like you said, you know, the Udyr um, is able to do nothing against this Hecarim. Three second dragon, no contest. A lot of this champion's strength, yeah, it comes from the fact that he's able to just walk up and stat check people. But if he can't do that, and he's playing against Hecarim, who's got Divine Sunderer at 11 minutes and Merc Treads, what's he going to do? He's going to stun you and then walk away. So I, I, I think NYU's got gold exactly where they want it. They're two dragons up, and they're in a great spot at this point in the game. Yeah, really well done uh, from NYU. And, you know, I talked about it, how they, they just played more disciplined, and obviously getting extra back is a boost because they're more comfortable, but they're also just not forcing anything, right? These plays, it's like, yes, Doubt is diving into, like, you know, making these crazy flashy plays on Hecarim, but they're really calculated flashy plays because he knows his limits, and they're just, you know, playing this really, really solid, well-thought-out game plan, and the macro has been there. Yeah, and I think also you have to look at the, the Mordekaiser pick in the mid lane and kind of question it. Usually these, you know, it's, this is their, I believe this was, uh, this was their late game R5 counter pick. And yeah. you want to be, you want to be using that slot in your draft to guarantee a good winning matchup, especially in the lane is important. And mid lanes, I mean, I think mid lanes just lost, actually. Absolutely. I think well, it's just over. Even, so Jumbo Booty used the Death Realm onto Loki and Parkour died. in that last fight and died. Even with the stolen stats that he gets from using that ability, he lost the 1v1. So I, I, I think this... I don't think this matchup gets a lot better for jump for Mordekaiser as Echo starts to get more and more items. So, you know, I I, I really am, am wondering what the impetus was behind this Mordekaiser pick if it's not even going to win lane against Echo. Yeah, definitely rough. And Loki Parkour also, you know, credit work to uh, playing this matchup really well and understanding, you know, how to use his stun timing windows and how to how that happens. So uh, really quick check in top lane. 
Nar is a little bit down CS. We do see Selenic move back towards that like weak side esque style that he has been playing more often uh, in this game. But he is pushing Gragas in, which yes, he's down CS, but he's also made it so that Gragas isn't really able to influence the map. Uh, Tentakai is locked into defending this wave top lane. And so, it, you know, it's not the end of the world. Selenic is down 20 farm, whatever, not the end of the world here. Doubt is looking mid lane. Here comes the Hecarim. The Loki parkour, look at this, in the death row. He's just fine. He's still got the ultimate available. Using that mobility to kite away from Jumbo Booty as Dirtbag has rotated up. Oh. Shadow is going to give Doubt the shield. Ar uh, Aiken has arrived and Doubt has taken a little bit of damage, but Selenic is going to walk down uh, just as Extramatic and Deweed were also coming up. So it is going to be the clean disengage from NYU and Carlton trying to make things happen, but are grasping at straws. Yeah, I mean, the, the Encore was burned, the Death Realm was burned, nothing happening for it. You know, they, they got a couple ultimates out of the side of NYU, that's about it. A lot of wasted time and, uh, you know, not not really the end of, like, NYU doesn't really care. Like, you know, they are just getting to farm up on this Senna. We're going to see an engage here from Deweed. Ooh, he's going to use that W stand behind me to, or sorry, that's, uh, yeah, stand behind me. Yeah. To get forward onto the minion, a uh, little bit of damage out onto Dirtback and the Qs, the concussive blows, the Winter's Bites are doing so much damage for Braum. You don't expect this champion to hurt as much as he is hurting right now, especially when you've got Senna sending those long range auto attacks over the top. So NYU is going to be very happy with the way this uh, bot lane has been going. Almost uh, full item completed onto Extramatic. Um, that is probably going to be the next back as he's got a lot of money from all those assists. Um, they're just going to try and shove this mid lane in. And Aiken. one thing I'd like to, to mention real quick, sorry, is uh, about about the setup. You know, I talk about bot lane a lot. I only play bot lane, so I know it well. Uh, is Yes, you talked about how setup is maybe a little bit not synergistic with Braum, but this on hit build is very much so... Uh, much better at that than the normal Senna builds we used to totally. see because she does attack faster. And the Q from Senna does count as an auto attack for the, the sake of Braum's passive, which mm -hmm. is definitely meaningful when it comes to proccing the passive. So it's actually not the end of the world. And we're seeing, you know, oh, okay, you're like, okay, Senna's down some farm here. Uh, but Braum has 31 farm because Senna wants to get those souls. You can almost count those as, as Senna's farm uh, when you look at those souls. If we can actually look at how many souls the Senna has, perhaps. Uh, one of my favorite mini games, 31. Okay, 31. Yeah, that's okay. pretty good. And uh, yeah. you know, th this bot lane, which you know they they dedicated this Seraphine, they've dedicated this Udyr, trying to get this Aphelios ahead, and he one in three. He's not even up gold. Like, it's a lot of wasted resources towards bot lane for Carlton that aren't paying off right now. Yeah, and in a sense, it's it feels extra bad because it's kind of a coin flip, right? They're all putting all of their resources into bot lane, so. Uh, if that doesn't work out and your eggs are all in one basket and the basket breaks, it's not going to be very good for you, but it's going to be the Glacial Fisher. You see Deweed using that Braum counter pick to block the Encore. The Jumbo Booty has found himself in the Death Realm. With so Lennox have to go Mega. He's going to go down. So Lennox so low, though. Mega, barely surviving. Oh. into the wall for the Aphelios is going to take him out. It's all I can, can do to take the blast cone over NYU killing four and it's running for they're his gonna life. follow up with the dragon here for sure yeah this is just uh, you know rift herald mid they're getting two mid tower dragons up free third dragon this is a 22 minute soul on the way for NYU they just got another four for a like Carlton's already just like totally on the back foot here and you know I don't love to say it, but can I get a jungle diff in the chat? I mean, doubt here on this Hecarim. He's up 3,000 gold at 17 minutes by yeah, himself. Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable play from doubt. Yeah, and I also I also want to highlight, we talked about in our interview earlier, how the Braum is reserved as a counter pick. I was actually wondering about that, because usually when you've got the Senna, you pair it with the Tom Kench. So I was curious right. about what the Braum is since we talked about not necessarily maybe a classic combination, but you saw in that fight how effective the Braum Unbreakable Shield is at blocking Seraphine ult. That Encore would have hit potentially like four or five members of NYU yeah, yeah. and could have changed the fight. It totally fact, negates the ability. He got right up in there, he got that shield up and Dirtbag was unable to get any CC onto anyone. So I really like the pick. Uh, 
We saw right there the effectiveness of it. I just want to highlight that. Uh, one thing I did talk to about, uh, talk to Mystery Bait about last week was about that fasting thing that we've seen a lot in pro play. And what he said was, uh, we've tried it. They haven't practiced it a whole lot. And the reason why is Extramatic feels so good and so comfortable on the Senna pick anyway that they feel like they'd rather just give him all the gold they can, not worry about the whole Souls thing. And as we're going to see Doubt here, just, you know, Aiken just doesn't have anything he's allowed to take. He's just gonna fuck his way in there and take that scuttle crab away. Has a little bit of a fight in the bot lane. Jumbo Booty trying to make what he can happen. Rift but... Maker completed for Mordekaiser. Yeah, he's got that item break point. He's trying to make some some fights go on in a low key parkour, but he's just able to run away using that Z drive resonance but movement speed. Just what I was gonna say, just finish it up, is that extra oh, yeah. when he's good on this skin, like. You might as well just let him have it and, and pick something with a little bit more utility. Like, yes, the Senaton is very good and Tom Kench offers some really nice stuff, but like when you're able to pair it with this Braum instead and still have it be this effective, uh, you know, it's it's huge. It, it, it gives you a lot of options and uh, Extramatic on Senna, obviously really, really powerful, doing a great job. And uh, this Braum, like we talked, like you said, I mean, man, Seraphine feels pretty bad. It's it's such yeah. a good pick. I, I said that I thought it was the best pick in all of League right now, but not when your ultimate can't hit anybody. Right, there you go. That's the caveat, right. Right. <laughs> um, I also I also want to say that um, a lot of people, the, the common thinking I think is that you do fasting Senna into matchups where you can do it um, and get a lot of stacks early by, by hitting and proccing that passive. And in the matchups like Seraphine of Belios where it's harder for you to step up and just hit people, yeah that farming is better. So I think even if they had practiced the Fasting Center, that farming is better this game. So for sure. no no lost potential there, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're, we're talking a lot about this bot lane, but I mean, really, also 203 Selenic playing this quote unquote weak side, but he's strong now. Echo is ahead. Obviously, Doubt is two, uh, at 20 minutes on this Hecarim. And yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a 6k gold lead at 20 minutes. It's about to be soul for NYU. They have items that Carlton can only dream of at the moment. And, uh, you know, if, if this is Infernal Soul in a minute and a half now, I don't know what Carlton does after that. I don't know how they, they, they get, I don't know if they're allowed to play the game. Yeah, this is going to be the last stand, I think, from Carlton. One minute and 30 seconds. Uh, teleport is available here for Tendakai and... I believe that uh, Selenic will also have it up, so there will be parity there. Though. It'll be close, yeah. So that could be the window if Carlton wants to try and make something happen. Uh, as we see Dewey actually uh, taking a little bit oh, of poke, oh, but using that horse shield. Here. Yeah, getting the damage reduction. Um, and it's all up to Carlton right now to try and get these lanes shoved in to get priority for this dragon. Like we said, this is the last stand that they have here. If Infernal Soul goes the way of NYU, it and is this is certainly over. This is where NYU, I think, needs to. They, they obviously need to, you know, use their advantage plays, but they also just need to be patient, right? Mm -hmm. They have total control over everything right now, and they just need to whittle away. Just squeeze Carlton out of the game. Take away as many resources as you can. Take away these jungle camps. Force in these waves. Look towards this dragon soul, and just make sure that Carlton doesn't even have a window, so that when this fight inevitably breaks out. It's Carlton desperation forcing on to NYU at a time and a place that NYU wants it. If they can do that, NYU will win the game right here. Yeah, I think I think the the main the main patience game right now has to do with the Seraphine ult and the Brahmi. Yeah. Uh, both sides want to force out that cooldown before they use theirs. And I think if Carlton can stay relevant in the fight long enough that they can wait for Brahmi to be used, they can burn that cooldown, uh, they'll win. As we're gonna have to see that right here. The Unbreakable has already been used. We gotta look- Encore hits three. Is it gonna come through? But low key parkour Aphelios is dead. already found the kill onto Aphelios. It is too little, too late for Carlton University. Jumbo Booty will fall following his teammates as it is just Aiken. Oh. The Onslaught of Shadows is gonna take Doubt over the wall. It is a clean ace for the side of NYU. It is the infernal soul for the inside of NYU. And they're going to set their sights on the Baron, on the end of the game. They can do whatever they want. Yeah, that was just, you know, the Brahm E was used maybe a little prematurely, didn't block the Encore, but it didn't matter because he was able to tank so much damage anyway from the Aphelios and from the Seraphim that uh, Loki Parkour was able to just assassinate Never Story, who 
uh, you know, is, is, you know, not even two items yet. And <laughs> it's just not really able to get a lot done anyway, but that is a lot of the damage if they have any from the side of Carlton. And this is going to be the 23 minute Infernal Soul. That's Baron picked up. They're going to back a clean five for zero ace for NY2. And this is looking like a dominant 2-0 win for New York University in week five. Yeah, 10k gold up for NYU. Four dragons secured Infernal Soul over them. How many soul? Can we get a check on the souls here? Uh, production, that would be great. Um, because this Senna is two items, she's online, 50, 50. souls, uh, so not quite as many oh. as uh, you would you would maybe want, but it doesn't okay. matter. She has two and a half items. Yeah, it doesn't I think matter. it'll make it. You've got Kraken Slayer Raid Blade already on deck. Um, it's just a matter of NYU pushing in these side lanes here. Um, they well, don't. We talked actually, about. Sorry, go ahead. No, uh, they don't have uh, any of these side lane towers taken out quite yet. So there is going to be a little bit of a dance getting those down, but it shouldn't be too hard for them to close that out now. We talked about Carlton also being this kind of kite comp, and it's hard to kite uh, a comp that is up by 10,000 gold because they'll just kill you. Uh, and. It's, you know, you, you can't ever get onto the Senna as Jout's just gonna, you know, oh my god. Dow's just gonna kill everybody. Never story's low. He's gonna get the ultimate off, but he's gonna die as well. Dow's gonna get a oh. double kill. Pentakai yeah. is stunned up as well. He has a kill, so Wee's gonna pick one up. Senna's gonna pick one up. Triple kill, actually, for Dow. Jump up, Booty's the only member left. They're in the death, death realm, but there will be only one death here on the side of Carl Carlton, and it will be the Quadra kill picked up for Dow. Five yeah. for zero. Can I get a Bud Light Ace in the chat? That's going to be the Bud, game for NYU. Bud Light Ace there for NYU. Hey, are you 21? Hey, are you 21? <laughs> I'm actually not. Ah, okay. <laughs> well, no one come after us, Riot. Don't yeah. TOS, don't TOS us, Twitch. Um, Because there's been something dirty and illegal happening in this game. Oh my god, so Loki. NYU destroying, running over. Uh, oh! Oregon University. <laughs> Uh, it's gonna be another kill over, Looking for over gonna on die. the polio says they're farming the damage for minute stats right now. Doubt and NYU though will take a 2-0 over Carlton in what uh, we were talking about is kind of an upset for them. Yeah, I mean, I you know, going into this, I said I was a little nervous. You know, the only team Carlton had lost to so far was University of Ottawa, who's a very strong 4-0 team. Uh, and they took a game off them, and I was like, oh, you know, obviously I think NYU is really good, but it might be a little scary. And then I'm like, oh, we've got a sub game one. Uh, like, what's going to happen? What's going to happen is NYU looks ready to win this week, win next week, head to playoffs, and do some damage. That's what I think is ready to happen. Great yeah, games here for NYU. Yeah, and I think the takeaway is why do they keep letting this guy have Hecarim? Why Stop do they keep giving him Hecarim. Hecarim. Um, yeah. Unless, you know, we have seen jungle changes in the last couple of, of days. And um, I think if teams can find a counter relatively quickly to this champ uh, in the future, I don't I don't hate if they leave it up and find a counter. But as it is, as we've seen it, this this champion is, is ridiculous and must be taken away from this guy. Yeah, definitely uh, a dominant, perfect game there. Uh, I don't even want to know what his KDA on the champion is going to be after. It'll have to crunch the numbers. But I think it's pretty fair to say player of the game goes to doubt. Yeah. Uh, I don't yeah. think that's too much of a stretch. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I think it might be fair to say player of the series as well. I mean, Selenic doing some really good work. We didn't get to talk about him, but here's the thing. If you're playing weak side top lane and the commentators don't talk about you, I think that means you're doing your job because it means you're not dying. And he just came into these fights. He pressed R, uh, you know, low key parkour and Selenic did, uh, excuse me, doubt did the rest. And yeah, great two zero here for NYU. Yeah, they played the better bot side, and uh, that's what ended up uh, getting them the win, as that's what Carlton tried to do, but they executed the game plan better. So excited that NYU will be able to go on in the tournament. How many weeks left of regular series, series do we have here? One, One more week. Delta. One week left. And then Winner, on go Winner go home. Winner go home. It is do yeah. or die for NYU going in. Unfortunately, Carlton, GG's as well to Carlton. They will be. Delegated to the Timo Cup, I believe, if they would like to oh. play in that. It's an optional tournament for those who were unlucky enough to get two losses during the regular season. Unlucky, yeah. Unlucky. Uh, unlucky. I mean, unlucky. I'd also just like to commend NYU as well. I talked a little bit. The thing I wanted, you, you asked me, okay, what do you want to see from NYU going into game two? And I said I wanted them to remain patient. I wanted them to play their game plan, and I wanted them to execute. Check, check, check. There clean, clean, clean. Really well there done from go. NYU.
Done, done, and done. Absolutely. So I also think, if I am correct, we are going to talk to Daweed. Okay. Uh, if he's around, if we could get some confirmation. Are we going to ask him about Solar Flare? Or is that off Get some Furbo. Uh, I'm going to ask about Solar Flare. <laughs> Look, if they lost, I wouldn't ask about Solar Flare. But after yeah, a 2-0, it's okay. Yeah, I think I can, we can do talk it. about Solar Flare. Yeah. Yeah, okay. uh, so, I mean, we might even get Furbo and Deweed in here. So stick oh. around if you're watching. Get the double whammy. Uh, Mystery Van's here, too. We got the whole party. We got the whole the crew squad here. is here. Let's go. Let's go. We'll wait. Just hold on a minute. We'll, we'll get that all, all settled. Oh. Bye, Mystery Van. Nope, Mystery Van's not here. He didn't like us. No. We didn't, we didn't give him enough of a coach diff. Coach Diff. It was a coach yeah. diff. Coach Diff. Coach Diff. Yeah. I mean, I don't I don't have anything to say about that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's hard to analyze a dominant like that one. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, I I was critical of the blind Echo Z, but if you if you're killing people on it, it doesn't matter if you're not gonna get punished for those picks. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. Yeah, you do what works, I guess. Do we we got Dewey hey. here? Yeah. Welcome. What's man. up? What's up? Congratulations on the 2-0. How are you feeling? Thank you. I'll ask you all feeling the cheesy good. questions after sports games, which is like, you know, how does it feel to win? Uh, well, probably pretty good. But how does it feel to win like that? You know, Carlton, tough opponent. I'm sure you guys did a lot of work coming into this one. And to to really pull off the 2-0 the way that you did, uh, I mean, it must feel good. How are you feeling after that? Uh, I just got to say it's a sub diff. Yeah, <laughs> I agree, actually. Imagine the sub diff if you hit solar flares in game one. No, I'm kidding. Uh, we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> we were joking about it in the uh, before you got pulled in here, just because we were like talking about a game one. Like, man, imagine how good these fights go if they actually got stunned. But you hit the ones that mattered in that first game, and uh, talk to us a, a little bit uh, about um, about this Brom pick. You know, we we talked to Mystery Van before this game in the draft phase about how you'd been holding onto this Brom. Uh, for the Seraphine matchup. You haven't played it yet this year, but it's something you've practiced. And uh, yeah, just tell, tell me about, you know, how you feel on that champion. Like, do you feel like it's overall really strong or just into this Seraphine kind of thing? And the pair Brom is really too. strong. Uh, with Senna, it's even better, but any ults you can stop, it just completely denies their game plan and then they don't know what to do. So it yeah. really works in 5v5. And I know you, uh, you're you a big fan of the Galio. I know that's a favorite of yours. Um, and I'm curious, you know, with that Galio getting banned away from you now quite a bit, which I'm sure feels good to be respected on that champion. You have a, a 9 KDA on Galio, I think, this year. Uh, uh, but but going forward, moving forward, obviously, you know, we can talk about the Carlton match, but you got one more week left. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what do you feel like, you know, we, we talk a lot about this bot lane because you and Extramatic have just been so good in the duo. What do you feel like, you know, is, is the focus for this final week? Uh, we just got to make sure everything's clean. So practice up and I think we can win, obviously, but I agree. Always got to practice. Zach, what do you got? You got any questions for, for our man to weed? Yeah, I, I'm curious about, um, yeah, I, talk to us about what you think your strength is as a team. Cause I think we've seen a couple of weeks where, uh, you know, this week we were talking about how on paper, maybe Carlton has the edge, um, Obviously, though, you were able to upend that. Um, so what do you think as a team you do well that enables you to kind of hit above your weight class, uh, if you will? We've got a lot of different win cons. So our mid can pop off, our jungle can pop off, our ADC can pop off, and our top can pop off. So, uh, And I always pop off. So, and do we pop <laughs> yeah, off? yeah, it's yeah. true. So it's a so we just gotta, what you're telling us. Yeah, we just got to focus on whoever's ahead. And um, most enemy teams, they always just have one game plan so we can switch it up so uh this is a question i'm not sure uh you've this is not your first year on the team right you've played you've played on the team before no this is my first year oh it is okay so uh, but i was curious i know that you know doubts a freshman rookie jungler you know youngest guy on the team uh what has it been like having him come in and like you know get that sort of young influence i know a couple of you are grad grad students as well so uh, you know, what's it been like playing with him? And obviously on this Hecarim, it's been it's been huge, but it seems like you guys have gotten some really good synergy in the bot lane. Uh, so I'm curious, curious, like, just what that's been like, you know, learning to play with play with Doubt. <laughs> Doubt's just really good. That's all I can say. <laughs> it's just really good. He brings a lot of uh, energy to the game. Yeah. Um, one other question I had, actually, Aaron, if you have anything else as well, um, was... I'm curious from a shot calling perspective, 
if, if you could give us some insight, who's the, vo- who's the loudest voice on the team? Who's making the calls? Is it you? Is it doubt? Is it, you know, mid lane? What's going on? Mm, it's a combination of me, mid and jungle and in team fights, we usually know what to do, but it is everybody's yelling the loudest and I hope I get the good calls in and people listen to me. So it's gotcha. kind of what you need to do as support is For sure. get, bring the macro game because you have a lot of time to look at the map and set up the vision. So if you're not doing that as support, you're making a mistake. Yeah, gotcha. well, I think we saw we saw a lot of great uh, vision, a lot of great vision play around around the dragons, um, especially in that second game. So props to you and props to the team for executing on that for sure. Yeah, do we anything else you'd like to say? Anyone you'd like to shout out? Say yeah, hi to your I'd like mom. to shout out uh, my mom. And yeah. <laughs> I'd like to shout out Eric's mom as well. Our, uh, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Dawid, thank you so much. Keep smurfing on them. Uh, looking forward to week six. We'll be rooting for you in the booth as we always do. And uh, excited to see you guys take that one down, move on to playoffs. And uh, congrats on the win. Pass it along to everyone else. Thanks. Thanks so thank much. You. All right, so Dawid here. Yes, the sub diff indeed. Uh, always a pleasure to, to be able to talk to these guys after the games. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I just am reading the chat a little bit. Uh, would like to give a shout out to everyone in the chat, everyone tuning in. Uh, it's always a pleasure to cast for you. Uh, Aaron, always a pleasure to have you in the booth. Uh, always, what else do you got? Any, any final thoughts? No, I, I, I came into this expecting a close series and, uh, walked out of it, having gotten a stomp. So, you know, uh, hopefully looking forward to, uh, some, some playoff games, uh, where we can get some really some really close action. And with this win, that puts uh, NYU one step closer to doing that. So happy to be on that trajectory. Yeah, so uh, just a couple of, you know, just for fun, uh, just because I can and I want to sound like I'm a professional, uh, a couple of news around the league, if we will. Uh, a couple of the top teams who have been at the top all year actually lost today. So University oh. of Toronto got 2 0 by York. A lot of Canadian uh, teams. A lot of Canadian, a lot of really good Canadian teams, actually. Really? What's in the water up there? I don't know. Uh, League of Legends juice, I guess. League of Legends um, juice. And then uh, Waterloo. Waterloo. Right through Canada, actually. <laughs> uh, Waterloo University as well, uh, which is another Canadian school in Ontario, uh, who's been top of the bracket all week, lost this week as well. Um, interestingly, uh, here's an interesting one, is that Penn State, lost this week to UTM. Uh, so the 4-0 and there's a there's a bunch of yeah, there's a bunch of matches still in progress in this like sort of 0-ish uh, slot. So the only 5-0s left. There are three 5-0s left. There is uh, HU, uh, York University and University of Ottawa 5-0s. In the 4-0 spot, uh, the sorry, the uh, there's a bunch of 5-4-0s still playing too. Uh, but Waterloo, Waterloo actually lost to their 4-1. So the 4-1 slot now, which is where NYU is sitting, uh, is pretty tight. And there's a lot of really good teams. So next week's going to be really interesting. Obviously, we do not know yet who the bracket is going to be. I believe, Steve, maybe you can confirm. Uh, we usually do find out on Monday uh, who the next round matchup is going to be. Uh, and you can find that information uh, at NYU underscore PGN, which is Poly Gaming Network on Twitter. Uh, you can follow Aaron and I on Twitter. It's, let's see if I can point in the right place here on the screen. Oh, there on the screen. Uh, and <laughs> and it's, it's underneath me. I'm at Jaden Rosard. This is at Aaron B. Vanek. Uh, and yeah, follow us on Twitter. Aaron. It's a pleasure. It's always a pleasure casting for for NYU. Thank you for being here. Always anything else? Being here. No, I, I I'm excited to have been here and looking forward to some 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 more games in the future. Yeah. Uh, so four and one NYU. Uh, we will see you all next week, three p.m. Eastern time. We will be here. We will be live. We will have League of Legends uh, for Zoc for our amazing production man Silveke, aka Steve, who without whom this is not possible. Uh, Thank you all for watching. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you next time.